Earlier this week, Qualcomm launched the Snapdragon 8 Elite, the brand new flagship mobile processor for Android smartphones. But just how powerful is this processor? Before I start showing you some graphs and some benchmarks, I wanna go over exactly what happened here. So originally we were given benchmarks from Qualcomm and these benchmarks, we just had to trust. They could have been done in a very, very cold room, for example. They could have been done on a phone that had some sort of overclock or some sort of special hardware to make it so that it'd be slightly more powerful than it would be in the palm of your hand in a normal smartphone usage environment. But now we have slightly better numbers. We have numbers that come from a reference device that we got to hold and actually do benchmarks on ourselves. So these are the specs provided by Qualcomm for this reference device and represent what kind of phone you would need to have to achieve the benchmarks that I'm about to show you. As you can see, it's a quite high-end phone, but it's something that you probably would expect from something like a Galaxy S25 Ultra, which we'll probably see in early 2025. The important caveat here is that these benchmarks are not done on a retail-ready smartphone. This is a reference device that Qualcomm specifically created just for running benchmarks of the Snapdragon 8 Elite. So you still need to take these benchmarks with a grain of salt, even though they come from us. It won't be until we actually get a real retail phone that we can run benchmarks on and give you some real world idea of what the phone can actually do. That all being said, let's jump into some benchmarks from this Qualcomm reference device, starting with Geekbench 6. So we have some single and multi-core benchmarks here. And as you can see, these numbers are quite high, especially when you compare them to the Galaxy S24 Ultra which of course runs the previous model of the Snapdragon processor, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. As you can see from these benchmarks, the 8 Elite completely obliterates those previous benchmarks set by the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Next up, we have some benchmarks for PCMark Work 3.0. This benchmark primarily focuses on real world activities that you would do on your phone, such as playing a video, scrolling through your picture feed, browsing the web, etc. So with this benchmark, once again, we see it completely jumping ahead when compared to the 8 Gen 3 from last year inside the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Now, this reference device is quite powerful and we're not quite sure if it's going to be just as powerful as the Galaxy S25 Ultra we expect to see next year, but this does give you a pretty good idea of just how much faster the Galaxy S25 Ultra could be with the Snapdragon 8 Elite inside. Now I have three benchmarks to show you in the wildlife family, wildlife, wildlife extreme, and wildlife extreme stress. While you're looking at these benchmarks, keep in mind that 100% of these scores are faster than all the top line level flagship smartphones that we see people record wildlife benchmarks for. These benchmarks are very exciting, but once again, I need to remind you that these are all taken from a reference device and we can't get really excited about how these phones are going to do when they come out with the Snapdragon 8 Elite until those phones actually come out. But we have a whole slew of smartphones that are on the way with this processor, including the Asus ROG Phone 9, the OnePlus 13, and a whole bunch of other ones with obviously the Samsung Galaxy S25 Ultra being the one that most people watching this are probably the most excited about. But until then, stay tuned to Android Authority where we will be going over all the news related to the Snapdragon 8 Elite and eventually being able to show you our own benchmarks on those popular devices coming out soon. Until then, I will see you in the next video. Woo! <laughs> 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 keep that in. <laughs>